three of four from Kansas City on quarterfinal Saturday, and it's a dandy. The top seeded Langston Lions at 33 and one bring their 14 game winning streak onto the floor against the second seeded Indiana Wesleyan Wildcats at 29 and five. Nate Gatter and our crew back with you from Kansas City where these two teams have impressed already with wins in the round of 16. Langston really cruised plus LS2 Shreveport. Indiana Wesleyan trailed at the half against Arizona Christian, but uh, quickly turned it around in the second half, and in the end was comfortable in a double-digit win. For Indiana Wesleyan, it was the Kansas City area kid, Griffin Cleaver, who had 26 points to lead all scorers in that Friday win over the Firestorm. He was efficient for the field and the free throw line for 26 points. Averages now a hair under 15 on the season per game. Meanwhile, for Langston, Anthony Roy, he struggled out of the gate, went 0 for 6 to start. He made 6 of 8 shots from then on and scored 11 of his 17 points in the second half for Langston. The Lions have uh, totally turned things around under Chris Wright, looking for their first Fab Four in program history. Only one loss this season came against Sagu on February the 1st. They were, of course, here in Kansas City a year ago. Uh, now hoping to do what they couldn't do then and push it through to the Fab Four for a date on Monday with the winner of our final game still to come, top-seeded College of Idaho and third-seeded Morningside in the nightcap this evening. Last year, they lost in the round of 16 to Georgetown, an upset. The Tigers won it by 14. It was just the third loss of the season for Langston. They come in having just one loss rather than two to the final site this year at 33 and one, 14 straight victories. Jay Allen Tovar jumps for the Lions. He wins it from J.B. Buchanan for Indiana Wesleyan. Langston has the opening possession in white. It's Roy, Dean, Allen Tovar, Mosley, and Lennox who start for Langston. Jaquavius Lennox earns the start after a strong performance yesterday. He carried a heavy load in the first half. Can't hit his first one, and it's rebounded by Buchanan. DJ Moore. Javen Buchanan, the leading scorer, Griffin Cleaver, Marcus Ankney, and Nathan Childers, the starting five for Indiana Wesley. Cleaver turns the corner, goes into Alan Tovar, couldn't finish, rebounded by Toru Dean. He impacts the games in a lot of ways, Dean. Leads the team with better than four assists a game, also more than two steals. DJ Moore's after that one, it's still loose all the way to the opposite baseline. And it's Langston's basketball with a timer all the way down to 12. So unsurprisingly, the Wildcats will put on a little full court pressure here, even if it's just token, to try to slow Langston down, make them take a couple extra seconds bringing up the floor. Dean gets ahead of steam. Dean all the way to the rim, and he's fouled. Foul goes on Angby. There's Greg Tonigal, 19th year head coach of Indiana Wesleyan. See that record. More than 500 wins. Three-time NAIA Division II national champions in 2014, 16, and 18 before the divisions were merged. Those are the only three Fab Fours in Wildcats history. They have never gone to the Fab Four without winning the title. Dean has the first point of the game. 68% foul shooter. He was good at the line yesterday. Bumping that number from 66 to 68. Childress was stumbling. The ball is loose. He and Roy are on the floor. Saved by Childress. Moore lays it up and in. Don't know if Childress will get an assist on that, but he deserves one. Got that play alive. Dean on the attack for two. Dean has the first four for Langston. And the Lions up by a pair.
More on Dean, spins to the rim, draws a second defender. Jay Allen Tovar says no, and Roy saves it. Roy working on more in those neon green shoes. Goes to Cortez Mosley. Backs it on Cleaver. Spinning shot, bangs home. How about that from Cortez Mosley? Kind of caught in the air, threw it up with the right hand. But it bangs in to give Langston a four-point lead. Childress. Bounce pass stolen, out in front, Dean, but a kick. Chris Wright upset already. 64 and four in two years at Langston, a team that was one and 27 the year before he got there. Came from Talladega, fellow HBCU, where he was a national runner up in 2022. The suspension of Cam Potts for that national championship game really hurt him against a ferocious Loyola defense. Another block. This time it's Roy denying Childress. Roy drives over Buchanan. Cleaver for the rebound. Three minutes played. Just a couple of points on the board for Indiana Wesleyan. Normally a very high scoring offense. 90 and a half points a game. Good pass for Moore, who has the only basket for the Wildcats. Buchanan turns, double clutches, and gets it to go. Here's Mosley, hit that circus shot earlier. Great separation on Childress and scores. That one is smoothly done. In contrast to the first one, that looked like getting to his spot. Cleaver got Alan Tovar in the air, ducked under him, and a foul on the floor. Jalen Tovar almost went for a shoulder ride on Griffin Cleaver. Look at this. It's like a dunk contest. If Jalen Tovar makes the NAIA dunk contest, he should have Griffin Cleaver come so he can jump over. Caveman Bontrager on 35 and red for Indiana Wesleyan. Along with Noah Smith. Moore takes a seat, as does Ankney. Langston has not gone to the bench yet. Buchanan, step back three, too strong. Lennox runs down the rebound. Pass off the hand of Devontae Brown, the first up in for the Lions. And out of bounds, at Langston turnover, the first for either team. Brown is really good off the Lions bench. In yesterday's round of 16 win over Shreveport, Kuth and Knox come on. Alan Tovar and Mosley sit for Langston. Could have two Lions in the Fab Four. Freed Hardeman already threw. They will play in the first semi, 5 o'clock Central Time on Monday after everybody takes tomorrow off. Freed Hardeman will battle Grace. Two one seeds already through. Smith, Childress, working on Knox, sets up Cleaver for three. We're down to six teams remaining in the NAIA, and four of them are one seeds. The 14th seeded Central Baptist Mustangs and the 15th seeded Evangel Valor knocks to the follow for two. Both eliminated today by top seeded Fried Hardeman and Grace, respectively. Winner of this game will play in the second semifinal on Monday night. Inside, a dunk for Caveman Bontrager. Winner of this game will battle the winner of our nightcap this evening. 
The College of Idaho in Morningside. Dean underneath Kuth, got it. Majak Kuth, 6'7", senior from Salt Lake City, Utah, off the feed from Taro Dean. Bontrager into Knox, regathered, and he's fouled. Knox had the foul trouble quickly yesterday, and he gets his first one here tonight. Bontrager the slam, Langston though up three. I told my dad from a young age that I wanted to play ball at the highest level. He told me that hard work and consistency would get me there and that he had a plan to help measure and track my progress. What I found is that the journey is the dream. With the help of the best coaches in America, my father and I launched an app that gives you a plan to become the best that you can be. Hometown Ticketing makes it fast and easy to buy tickets on your school's website or in the new Hometown Fan app. It's simple. Just search for your school, buy your tickets, and they'll be right there in your account, ready to be scanned when you get to your event. Download the Hometown Fan app today. There are two key moments in any college journey, when an acceptance letter arrives and the day the college education is paid off. And College App Student Loans is with you to help cover costs all along the way. We offer stress-free private student loans for undergrads, grad students, for parents, even loans to refinance your existing loans. Whether you're starting college, already in the workplace, or just trying to figure things out, turn to College App and breathe easy. This has the makings of a fun game. A couple of enthusiastic cheering sections. Langston fans certainly brought the noise yesterday. A couple of high scoring teams like to go end to end. And they're both off to good starts. Bontrager makes it a two point game at the line. Both teams shooting 50% or better. 16 uh, field goal attempts so far. All but two of them have come from inside the arc. Somewhat unusual in today's game. Both of these teams can shoot it from the outside, 36%. Both can shoot it well from the line. Mitchell on the pull up, missed it. Ronald Mitchell, senior from Philadelphia, had a quiet round of 16 game yesterday. Kuth and Knox in the front court with Dean, Mitchell, and Mosley the backcourt for Langston. Noah Smith in the backcourt with Cleaver and Moore. Buchanan and Bontrager the front court for the Wildcats. Von Traeger muscles into Kuth, had it blocked, rebound tipped out to Mitchell. I think the shirt tail is already out for Chris Wright. When we get to this kind of uh, point of the season, that's just the intensity the moment calls for. Mosley faces, spins, falls away, lost it. Five on four with Mosley trailing the play. Bontrager off the window, no, rebound Mitchell. Couple of quick misses, still a two point lead for Langston. Out of bounds off Mitchell. The Lions have turned it over for a second time. Indiana Wesleyan has not turned it over yet. And Chris Wright makes three changes. Kuth, Mitchell and Knox sit. Now the Tobar, Brown, and Lennox return. There is the shirt tail. But the shoes are always shiny. Never seen him on that sideline without shoes that reflected the stadium lights right back in your eyes. Buchanan pulls up. Right elbow J is pure. David Buchanan has four early points. Times the score at 12. He averages a hair under 21 a game. A leading score for the Wildcats who have four different players who average 14 or more. Bontrager, Childress, and Cleaver all between 14 and 15. Another turnover. This is taken by Kyle Sanders. And Buchanan at close to 21. 
Indiana Wesleyan basketball. The Wildcats have not led in the game. Moore slashes, draws a crowd, lost it. Smith off the touch pass from Sanders. Missed it too strong. Bontrager, the offensive rebound, threw it up as he was falling down. Greg Tonegal wanted a foul, didn't get it. And it's out of bounds, back to Langston. Here's Buchanan, smooth as you like. Over the smaller Toru Dean, who's given up seven inches there. And Buchanan, the sophomore from Lafayette, Indiana, fired up. Dean had it knocked out of his hands and out of bounds off Toru Dean. Noah Smith makes the play. Smith, the redshirt senior from Fishers, Indiana. Lone remaining Wildcat who was part of the 2021 team that came to KC as the number one overall seed. Led by two-time NAIA Player of the Year, Kyle Mangus. You can see there off the right hand of Toru Dean. DJ Moore working on Dean. Spin cycle, floater no. He thought he was fouled. Langston turnover is really the only thing slowing the Lions down at this end. They've turned it over four times in the first eight and a half minutes. You see Indiana Wesleyan hasn't had a single turnover yet. Knox back on for the Lions. He and Alan Tobar form the front court. Brown, Dean, and Lennox in the backcourt. Dean has to hurry. Dean with three to shoot. Outside Knox for three. Missed it too strong, and the rebound taken by Bontrager. It's a shot clock violation because the shot did not hit the rim. Not a bad look considering the circumstances for Sharif Knox, 32% three-point shooter, put off the mark. Greg Tonegal's Wildcats had found their footing early on. It looked like they were a little bit overwhelmed by the intensity that Langston brought in the first couple of minutes, something you can count on from a Chris Wright team. They are going to be aggressive and get after it from the get-go. Nobody needs to give Langston an invitation to the party. Childress rims out. Bontrager after the offensive rebound, but Lennox scoops it up. Rolling Allen Tovar is fouled, and he will shoot two. Kyle Sanders picks up the foul, his first. Only the second uh, charge to Indiana Wesleyan. Langston been called for two as well. Would think we'll have fewer whistles probably in this game than we did in the last. Wouldn't be that hard. And I would imagine we'll have the fewest whistles of all in our nightcap, depending on how the officials choose, of course, to officiate the game. Alan Tovar gets the free throw. But the College of Idaho and Morningside both decidedly finesse kind of teams. More brains and fluidity than there is brawn in that matchup. Jay Allen Tovar up to 64% now after he shot well in the free throw line yesterday. And he gets both of those smoothly done by the 6'9 senior from San Jose. Buchanan draws a hard hedge from Alan Tovar. Childress had to go get it just to protect possession. Cleaver drives on Roy, scoop layup, no, knocks the rebound. That's five straight misses for Indiana Wesleyan. The Wildcats have missed seven of their, of their last eight, and they haven't scored now for more than two and a half minutes. Langston's gone four and a half without a field goal. Mosley misses, tip no. Childress had it for a moment, but dribbled it inadvertently off the baseline. And so Langston will have it with 20 on the timer on the other side of the timeout. Lions 14, Wildcats 12. Past the midway point of the first. The first time I picked up a Spartan TF ball, I knew it was built different. You know that feeling from that first moment on, it never leaves your hand, it raises you lifts you to new heights, got you doing things like that. And once you're hooked, ain't nothing gonna stop that. It teaches you to be a student first, to lay it all out, just to do it again. And again. 
From the moment you pick up a TF ball, it's always there for you. Now do something with it. The landscape of sports is changing. AI is the next evolution. We're bringing it to fields and gyms everywhere with Huddle Focus. Just mount it, set it, and forget it. Multiple lenses, AI player tracking, automatic recording, a record on the fly with the Focus app, instant uploads, and flexible live streaming options. AI is changing sports. Use it to your advantage. Visit huddle.com slash focus today. it on top just over 10 minutes played in the first half of our third quarter final of four today in Kansas City. Nate Gatter and our crew back with you. Freed Hardeman won comfortably over Central Baptist. Grace was pushed certainly by Evangel but in the end pulled away. That'll be the matchup in our first semifinal on Monday night. You can get it right here on the NAI YouTube channel and on X. Anthony Roy three rims out. That was the only the second that Langston is trying. Two teams have taken 29 combined field goal attempts, only five from three. Steal by Roy. He gallops in for the stop. Anthony Roy's first bucket in style. It's the first field goal for more than five minutes for Langston. Meanwhile, Indiana Wesleyan's scoring drought has reached three and a half minutes. Good ball movement. Cleaver got Roy in the air and scores. That was well done by Griffin Cleaver. Long enough for Roy to fly by, but he got it up on the glass before Mosley could come over and help. That's five points for Cleaver. Big bucket for the Wildcats. Ball loose, another turnover. Langston has turned it over six times. Indiana Wesleyan just once. Moore for three. Wildcats lead for the first time today. That's a big sequence. Langston punished for the turnover. Roy, bodied by Moore. Eight to shoot. Slings it across. Demonte Brown for the foul line. Fall away. Missed it. Rebound loose. Alan Tovar shovels it out to Roy. Shot clock resets, and Roy buries the triple. Five straight for Anthony Roy, and Langston back on top on the first Lions three-pointer of the game. Childress gallops rim to rim. Got it, plus a foul. Sharif Knox is furious with Jay Allen Tovar. Allen Tovar gets the foul. It's his second. And we're tied up at 19. Childress went rim to rim, took the hit from Allen Tovar, and Knox couldn't get over to affect the shot. Childress cashes in on the three-point play. He has three points, a couple assists, and a steal in 10 minutes. And Indiana Wesleyan right back on top. A three-pointer for Moore, a three-pointer for Roy, a three-point play for Childress. Lennox trying to get free of Cleaver. Cooth shovels to Dean. Thought about a three. Lennox with eight. Lennox fall away. Got it. Jaquavius Lennox had that big game yesterday in the quarters. Still only averages under six points a game. But he looks very confident so far in Kansas City at the offensive end. 
Von Traeger's pass tipped in the air. Ankeny grabs it. Childress off a dribble handoff. Seven to shoot, lost the ball, it's loose. Dean and Childress after it, it's off to Dean and out of bounds with 4.9 on the timer. How about that effort from Toru Dean? Take another look at uh, Lennox at the other end. Had a hard time getting away from Cleaver once he did. Nice fall away over the taller Nathan Childress, just leaning back. Moore has to hurry. Step back, Jay missed it. Childress, Brown had a fistful of his jersey on the backside. Cleaver to the rim, righty finger over his home. Seven for Cleaver, and Indiana Wesleyan back in front. The lead changes hands every possession these last couple of minutes. Anthony Roy, who went 0 for his first six in yesterday's round of 16 win. Started 0 for two. Missed that one. Childers is fouled on the rebound by Brown. Indiana Wesleyan wanted that at the other end. Now gets it. The third uh, team foul, making the fourth team foul on Langston. Brown's first personal foul. David Buchanan returns for Indiana Wesleyan. He's joined by Cleaver, Ankney, and Bontrager on the floor for Indiana Wesleyan, along with Noah Smith. For Langston, it's Roy, Lennox, Kuth, Dean, and Mosley. A foul on Langston. That's a couple of quick whistles against the Lions. Mosley gets it, his first. The fifth against Langston. And Sharif Knox coming right back on for Mosley. 6.16 to go in the first half. The Wildcats have made four of their last five from the field. They have a chance to take a lead of more than one point for the first time. Langston is led by as many as four, but we played this whole first half in a five-point window. Pass swatted back on Cleaver. Roy on the run out. Dean, drive, kick, Lennox, three, good! Buchanan muscles it up over Lennox, and it sticks. That goes to the possession arrow, which favors Indiana Wesleyan. The drive by Dean, Lennox off the ball fake, repositions and caches. Five points for Lennox already, three rebounds in 10 minutes. And Langston back in front by two. Bontrager off the ball fake, missed it, put back no. Third effort, blocked by Kuth. Three shots for Bontrager. He couldn't get a single one to go. Not an efficient start for Cademan Bontrager on the interior. He is one for seven. Three of those misses on that possession. But a pass from Kuth off the mark, looking for Mitchell, who was open. And Langston turns it over for the seventh time. The Lions have played good interior defense. They've made a couple of threes. They've shot a significantly higher percentage. And they're plus five on the glass, but they're minus five in turnover margin. Seven for Langston, two for Indiana Wesleyan. As a result, the Wildcats have attempted 25 shots. Langston only 19. Ball loose, grabbed by Knox. There's the third Indiana Wesleyan turnover. Roy with his head up all the way. Crosses on Cleaver. Floater off the glass is good. Seven points for Anthony Roy, and Langston leads by four. Buchanan tried to go behind his back and a kickball by Mitchell takes us into a timeout. Langston 26, Indiana Wesleyan 22, 447 to go in the half. A back and forth affair. Stay with us.
have a little birthday message to read to someone too. I heard you really love basketball. You're a good shooter and a good dribbler. Happy birthday, MJ, and hope you enjoy your day. Thank you. You're welcome. Two semifinalists decided already today. Freed Hardeman and Grace will face off at 5 o'clock Monday evening. That's 5 o'clock Central Time Monday here in Kansas City. You can find it right where you are now, NAI YouTube channel or on X. Winner of this game will play in the second semifinal against the winner of our finale this evening. College of Idaho, the top seed and defending national champion in the listing quadrant uh, against third seeded Morningside. This is the only one versus two quarterfinal matchup. Lob to Von Traeger, he couldn't handle it. That's back-to-back -back Indiana Wesleyan turnovers. Now four and a half. All four one seeds still alive. Two of them already into the Fab Four. Down to six teams. Four of them are top seeds. Langston the one. And College of Idaho still to follow. Cortez Mosley might have grazed the front of the rim. Shot clock did not reset. Mosley goes back up and scores. Didn't need a reset. The largest lead for Langston at six points with four minutes to go until halftime. Feels like a big possession for Indiana Wesleyan. Wildcats held scoreless for almost three minutes. They've turned it over three times in that span. Make it four. Moving screen on Childress on the handoff. Going to be tough to get away with that period, especially right in front of the Langston bench. They are certainly going to make sure the official sees it. Whether he decides to call the foul is up to him, but no chance that's getting missed in front of the Langston bench. Mitchell, step back, three, short, rebound, Knox. Muscles through Smith and scores. Noah Smith and Griffin Cleaver are good players, but they are not keeping Sharif Knox off the offensive glass or from a putback. Eight-point lead for the Lions. Danger time here for the Wildcats in the final 320 of the half. Cleaver on Mosley, turns it over. Mitchell in the open floor, foul. All of a sudden, the turnovers are mounting for Indiana Wesleyan. And the Wildcats rebounding disadvantage is not improving. They've gone from plus five in the turnover margin down to plus one. And the rebound margin has gotten worse. They're minus seven. That's what we talked about. It was the turnover margin that was keeping the Wildcats in the game. Since then, they've turned it over five times in the last 339. And Langston has taken advantage to open up an eight-point lead. Look at our brackets we were just talking about, what we've had so far, what we have still to come. Grace over Evangel. Those numbers are flipped. It's 83-76. Grace topped Evangel to move on to the Fab Four on Monday night. And they will take on Freed Hardeman, which really beat Central Baptist by more than 11. That's, that's the final score. But it was very comfortable for those Lions in the second half. Could have two sets of Lions in the Fab Four this season. Along with the Lancers of Grace. And either the Yotes of College of Idaho or the Mustangs of Morningside. But certainly Indiana Wesley not out of it. There's College of Idaho at Morningside still to come tonight. I would uh, be shocked if we start that game at 7. But it'll come up just about 20 minutes after the end of this game. They do a good job here. Moving it along, keeping the breaks between games as short as possible. One of the things they do that I don't think you see elsewhere, including, say, at conference tournaments, where this kind of setup is common, is have the teams that are up next come out and start warming up, if you will, or at least get some shots up during halftime. So the first uh, eight or ten minutes of halftime of this game will be reserved for College of Idaho and Morningside to come out and take some shots to help make up for only having 20 minutes between games. Keeps it moving for the fans. And for you at home, Childress is fouled by Knox. That's the sixth Langston foul of the half, the second on Knox. 
Nine point lengths in advantage, but the last thing the Lions want to do is give Indiana Wesleyan, with how they've struggled to score the ball these last few minutes, a chance to pile up some points at the free throw line, where the Wildcats are one of the best free throw shooting teams in the country at 79%. Moore, and a foul called against Langston on the inbound action, and that's going to give free throws to Indiana Wesleyan. Demonte Brown picks up the foul, his second. And now fouls, foul shots coming for uh, Sanders. Well, at least one foul shot is coming. Kyle Sanders has only taken four free throws all year in 34 games. He's made all four of them. Not that time. First miss of the season for Kyle Sanders at the free throw line in game 35. And it's potentially a two-point loss for Indiana Wesleyan with the front end of the one and one. Dean, kick out, Roy, three, good. Anthony Roy makes it a 12-point length in advantage. Indiana Wesleyan scoreless for now almost five minutes. Five turnovers in that span. Moore turns the corner, affected by Lennox who throws it out for Dean. And a race to the rim for a miss. Childress with a rebound. Langston fans about to blow the roof off this place, but Dean couldn't finish the layup. Buchanan wants it, they can't get it to him. Skip pass Ankney, he was standing on the sideline. He drilled the three, but it will not count. Another Indiana Wesleyan turnover. That is six in the last five minutes and five seconds. And they have not scored a single point for that drought. 15 2 run for Langston, 13 0 run over the last 4 13. Indiana Wesleyan led 22 21, since then, 13 straight Lions points. DJ Moore just steals that inbound pass, way too easy. Sets up an open three for Childress. Missed it. The sloppy Langston turnover, but the Lions bailed out by the Childress miss. Backdoor Kuth that was tipped by Buchanan out of bounds. So it was around the same time in the game when Langston took over on Thursday, or uh, rather yesterday, against uh, LSU Shreveport. 24 to 10 run to finish the first half in that game. Into Lennox, good look, but Moore closed him out. Lennox takes a seat in the paint, kept the dribble alive, and then a foul. Moore called for a foul for jumping on top of Lennox. It's only the fifth team foul on Indiana Wesley, so no free throws. But it gets Lennox out of a tough spot and resets the shot clock to 20. A lot for Greg Tonegal to ponder at halftime, but his guys have to get there first, and it's getting worse quickly. Roy, 15-point lead for the Lions. Anthony Roy stares into the crowd, shakes his head. He was stoic. Another three. 13 first half points for Roy. 16 straight for the Lions. Buchanan once, no, twice, no. Rebound Langston. The Lions can go two for one if they hurry. Roy on Sanders. Mitchell. Dean has six to shoot. Dean a wiggle. Dean a double clutch. His layup off. Shot clock off. Indiana Wesleyan has gone from one up to 15 down in the last five and a half minutes. The Wildcats can hold for the final shot. They have not scored for more than six and a half. 
Moore, corner three. Go before the buzzer. Big shot for Indiana Wesley and to finally get something on the scoreboard. More than six and a half minutes without a point for one of the highest scoring teams in the NAIA. They averaged 90 and a half points a game. They scored just 25 in the first half. Anthony Roy had 13 on his own for Langston and the Lions up big. The landscape of sports is changing. AI is the next evolution. We're bringing it to fields and gyms everywhere with auto focus. Just mount it, set it, and forget it. Multiple lenses, AI player tracking, automatic recording, a record on the fly with the focus app, instant uploads, and flexible live streaming options. AI is changing sports. Use it to your advantage. Visit huddle.com slash focus today. I told my dad from a young age that I wanted to play ball at the highest level. He told me that hard work and consistency would get me there and that he had a plan to help measure and track my progress. What I found is that the journey is the dream. With the help of the best coaches in America, my father and I launched an app that gives you a plan to become the best that you can be. There are two key moments in any college journey, when an acceptance letter arrives and the day the college education is paid off. And College App Student Loans is with you to help cover costs all along the way. We offer stress-free private student loans for undergrads, grad students, for parents, even loans to refinance your existing loans. Whether you're starting college, already in the workplace, or just trying to figure things out, turn to College App and breathe easy. I have a little birthday message to read from someone too. I heard you really love basketball. You're a good shooter and a good dribbler. Happy birthday, MJ, and I hope you enjoy your day. Thank you. You're welcome. What does it mean to be you at CU? Anything you want. At Clark University, we empower you to pursue your dreams. You can double major and get involved. The arts, athletics, campus ministry, you name it. You can do all the things you love with people we know you'll love even more. And with Clark's group and Build Your Own Visit events, you can get in on the fun right now. Schedule your visit today and find out how you can be you at CU. The landscape of sports is changing. AI is the next evolution. We're bringing it to fields and gyms everywhere with auto focus. Just mount it, set it, and forget it. Multiple lenses, AI player tracking, automatic recording, a record on the fly with the focus app, instant uploads, and flexible live streaming options. AI is changing sports. Use it to your advantage. Visit huddle.com slash focus today. In the heart of the Midwest is a college that's different, where students work for their education instead of paying tuition, where teaching Christian character is just as important as academics, and where future leaders learn from world leaders. A college where our love for America is celebrated by preparing students to take their role in American history. This is College of the Ozarks. 
And this is where lives are changed. Hometown Ticketing makes it fast and easy to buy tickets on your school's website or in the new Hometown Fan app. It's simple. Just search for your school, buy your tickets, and they'll be right there in your account, ready to be scanned when you get to your event. Download the Hometown Fan app today. Kansas Wesleyan is an exciting university and a vibrant community. It offers unique, nationally ranked academic programs, engaging activities, and successful athletic teams. KWU combines all of these strengths to open doors for your future. Learn more today at kwu.edu. I have a little birthday message for you from someone too. I heard you really love basketball. You're a good shooter and a good dribbler. Happy birthday, MJ, and hope you enjoy your day. Thank you. You're welcome. First time I picked up a Spartan TF ball, I knew it was built different. You know that feeling from that first moment on, it never leaves your hand. It raises you, lifts you to new heights, got you doing things like that. And once you're hooked, ain't nothing gonna stop that. It teaches you to be a student first, to lay it all out, just to do it again. And again. From the moment you pick up a TF ball, it's always there for you. Now do something with it. I told my dad from a young age that I wanted to play ball at the highest level. He told me that hard work and consistency would get me there and that he had a plan to help measure and track my progress. What I found is that the journey is the dream. With the help of the best coaches in America, my father and I launched an app that gives you a plan to become the best that you can be. When I grow up, I want to be a soccer player. I want to be a scientist. I want to be an artist. At Spring Arbor University, we help you grow your childhood dreams into a reality. Surrounded by faculty, staff, and other students who will genuinely care for and about you, you can become more than you ever imagined. Let your light shine at Spring Arbor University. Whips it in, and it's in the back of the net!
First time I picked up a Spartan TF ball, I knew it was built different. You know that feeling from that first moment on, it never leaves your hand. It raises you, lifts you to new heights, got you doing things like that. And once you're hooked, ain't nothing gonna stop that. It teaches you to be a student first, to lay it all out, just to do it again. And again. From the moment you pick up a TF ball, it's always there for you. Now do something with it. I told my dad from a young age that I wanted to play ball at the highest level. He told me that hard work and consistency would get me there, and that he had a plan to help measure and track my progress. What I found is that the journey is the dream. With the help of the best coaches in America, my father and I launched an app that gives you a plan to become the best that you can be. First time I picked up a Spartan TF ball, I knew it was built different. You know that feeling from that first moment on, it never leaves your hand. It raises you, lifts you to new heights, got you doing things like that. And once you're hooked, ain't nothing gonna stop that. It teaches you to be a student first, to lay it all out, just to do it again. And again. From the moment you pick up a TF ball, it's always there for you. Now do something with it. Recent congressional testimony of three elite university presidents who could not condemn the genocide of the Jewish people only exacerbates the view that higher education is not doing what it's supposed to do for this country. Based on the Catholic intellectual tradition, at St. Thomas University, we don't tell you what to think, we teach you how to think. So if you want to learn how to think for yourself, think critically, and be educated to become an ethical leader for the global community, STU is for you. I have a little birthday message for you from someone too. I heard you really love basketball. You're a good shooter and a good dribbler. Happy birthday, MJ, and I hope you enjoy your day. Thank you. You're welcome. I have a little birthday message for you from someone too. I heard you really love basketball. You're a good shooter and a good dribbler. Happy birthday, MJ, and I hope you enjoy your day. Thank you. You're welcome. Back in downtown Kansas City, where Langston leads Indiana Wesleyan 37 to 25 on this quarterfinal Saturday. The Lions went on a 16-0 run, led by as many as a dozen. Indiana Wesleyan was cooking early. Griffin Cleaver, who we highlighted at the outset, had seven points, a rebound, and an assist, but he turned it over four times. Part of that stretch where Indiana Wesleyan, after having taken care of the ball so well, 
turned it over six times in six minutes, and Langston took advantage. Anthony Roy, who after an 0 for 6 start in uh, the round of 16 yesterday, has just dominated opponents on this floor. He came on for 17 points, 11 of them in the second half yesterday, 13 in the first half tonight. And his Lions are all over Indiana Wesleyan. 15, 50% from the field to 33. Both teams made half of their three-pointers, but not a high volume of threes for either team as a ratio of total attempts. Those second chance points, of course, a product of the rebounds. That's where Langston really had its advantage. Early on, at one point, it was seven Langston turnovers to one for Indiana Wesleyan. And at that point, the turnover margin was keeping the Wildcats in the game. When the turnovers tightened up, so too uh, the game widened out with Langston taking at one point a 15 point lead. Indiana Wesleyan led a couple of times, never by more than one point. Ball loose and it's out of bounds. So uh, Langston turnover to start the second half. We'll see what kind of energy the Wildcats bring at a halftime. You would think if they're gonna make a serious push to try to win this game, it's going to involve cutting this down to six or seven points in the first, say, five, six minutes of the second half. If they let Langston grow it again to 15 or to 20, that could be curtains. Buchanan had it halfway down. Mosley the rebound. DJ Moore hit a three for Indiana Wesleyan just before the end of the half. That's the three there in the 16 to three Langston run. Indiana Wesleyan had gone more than six and a half minutes without a single point before Moore hit the three with just a couple of seconds on the clock. Seven to shoot for Dean, still standing on the midcourt logo. Four to shoot. Dean on the pull-up with two. Got it. Toro Dean has six. And it's a 14-point Langston lead. Childress. Out of the perimeter against Jay Allen Tovar. Takes a bump to the baseline. Missed his reverse. Rebound out of bounds. Last off Allen Tovar, but it never hit the shot clock. Or I hit the rim, I should say. So the shot clock did not reset. 16 still on the timer. Dean, I mean, at this point, the shot clock's at six. He works his way to the left side. Pulls up calmly. Created some good space with that last crossover on Childress. Pretty simple jumper for him in the end. Childress, good look at a three. Rebounded by Roy. Roy around the screen, draws two to the corner. Falling out of bounds. Baseball's a looper to Lennox. Pulls it away from Cleaver, sets up Mosley. And Lennox, four to shoot. Got Ankeny in the air. Dean a deep three. Off the mark. Childers did well to close out. I thought the best look there was Mosley probably in the corner. But Langston never got one that was quite satisfied with. Here's Javen Buchanan. He has only four points. Averages nearly 21 a game. Ankeny stripped by Lennox. Mosley with his head up. Mosley on more and a foul. That's the second personal foul on Moore and the first on either team since halftime. Nate Gatter and our crew back with you from Kansas City. Second half of game three of four today. College of Idaho and Morningside to follow. Roy, little ball fake, turn around, hook, thought he was fouled. Mosley saves it. Mosley in the corner. Strips out of bounds, last off Indiana Wesleyan. Langston will keep it with 18, or uh, rather a 14 point lead and 11 on the timer. 17.38 to go in the game. Dean on Childress, spins back left, jumper no, rebound Ankney. Buchanan, one move, then two, floater short, tip Childress. 
second, or uh, rather the uh, bucket for Childress is his second of the game. He has five points. And Indiana Wesleyan trails by 12. Lennox, corner three to Strong. Rebound takes a bounce. Roy tried to save it off Ankeny, but stepped on the sideline. Sharif Knox returns for Langston, and Cortez Mosley sits down. The 6'5 Childress handles out high. Buchanan muscles into Lennox, stripped. Either a steal or a block. Most likely the former. Langston scoring drought is at two and a half minutes. Dean with nine to shoot. Lennox with six. Dean attacks. Dean underneath. Alan Tovar for two. Tolar just does a lot of those little things inside. It's a Langston team clearly that runs through its guards, but you've got to have big guys who can play that role, and he is one of them. Foul on Langston. Is that on Sharif Knox? He just cannot stay out of foul trouble here in KC. It is his third personal foul. Only been on the floor 13 minutes. I don't know that he made it 13 minutes before fouling himself out of the game uh, in the round of 16. He's having a tough time staying on the floor. Bontrager pulls it on Kuth through contact, falls off the rim, he got it back, second effort, no. Rebound, a foul on Childress. Roy whistles one underneath to Mosley. Layup, no. Bontrager the rebound. Buchanan still hasn't gotten going offensively. He's two for eight. Cleaver had seven in the early going. Quiet since. Moore drives on Roy. Got separation and laid it in. Anthony Roy looking at the official. Wondering where the foul was on that. Toro Dean thought about a three. Now he'll take it. Rebounded by Buchanan. Chance for Indiana Wesleyan to cut it within 10, even single digits. Moore to the rim, layup, no, but a foul. Anthony Roy picks up his first personal. That's the second against Langston, and on the other side of the break, D.J. Moore will shoot two free throws. 12-point lead for Langston. Have a little birthday message for you from someone, too. I heard you really love basketball. You're a good shooter and a good dribbler. Happy birthday, MJ, and hope you enjoy your day. Thank you. You're welcome.
Trout whips it in, and it's in the back of the net! Yeah! Mitchell and Langston with a 12-point lead with 14.29 to go in the game. DJ Moore will be at the free throw, free throw line for two shots. Langston's gone a little bit cold, just one of seven over the last few minutes. Moore at the foul line, 81% shooter, misses the first. Just uh, the fifth free throw of the game for Indiana Wesleyan. Wildcats are two of five. Look at those numbers since they took that lead with 6.50 left in the first half. Almost 12 and a half minutes of game clock. And now nine points to their credit. Or uh, rather eight, I should say. Eight points in the last 12 and a half. Not very good for a team that averages 90 and a half points a game. Mosley through some contact, couldn't finish. Rebound, Montrager. Moore draws two defenders. Short corner, Montrager, muscles inside, missed the layup. Caveman Montrager is one for 10. Mitchell. Dean. Lennox with seven. Lennox working on Cleaver. Fall the way, air ball. Buchanan. All the way in on Lennox and a foul. That's the third on Langston since halftime. If it's Lennox, it's his first. And it is. He's going to check out anyway, along with Mosley. Roy and DeMonte Brown return. Buchanan fouled by Mitchell, who is shocked by the call. That's four on Langston now, and that could be a real weapon for Indiana Wesleyan if they could get into the bonus early, because this is an excellent Wildcats free throw shooting team, and they're having such a tough time scoring inside, or anywhere for that matter. Cleaver leaves it for Bontrager, couldn't handle it. Brown the other way, two on two. He fans it out, and Anthony Roy can survey. Seven minutes played second half, it's been scrappy. Roy steps past Bontrager, make it Buchanan, couldn't score. Bontrager has the rebound. A lot of physical play inside. Buchanan for three. The official signal, they will look at it. They're calling a two for now. But they're going to look at it at the next stoppage. Seven points for Indiana Wesley and just four for Langston since halftime. Mitchell's layup, no, tip by Tobar, but it's offensive basket interference. So let's see, it's tough to tell on that angle as right toe might have just been on the line. Looks like it. Yeah, that'll be a two. Indiana Wesley will take it, but certainly it feels like every point counts in this game. Buchanan seals on Brown, faces from 18, backs into the short corner, draws help from Dean, fadeaway jumper, no, rebound tapped out off of Allen Tobar. And Indiana Wesleyan keeps possession with 20 on the timer. 11.57 to go in the game. The Wildcats have closed what was a 15-point deficit seconds before halftime, down to nine. Inbound to Moore, working on Roy.
Cleaver trying to shake free of Mosley. Seven to shoot. Fall away floater, foul line no. Moore out the other way. Two on one with Alan Tovar for the stop. Jay Allen Tobar with authority. He has six points. The Langston fans have something to cheer about almost for the first time in the second half. Moore. Cleaver. Three. Kicks off the heel. Offensive rebound, Bontrager. Smith tries to turn the corner. D.J. Moore for three. Alan Tovar this time claims it. Indiana Wesleyan has closed the rebounding gap. Langston just plus one on the glass. But it has not been enough. The Wildcats shooting under 30% from the field. Mosley, foul. Easy as you like. Cleaver probably has to do a little more to stay in between there, but it was a losing situation for him, probably whatever way you slice it. Cortez Mosley will have two free throws. 82% foul shooter. He has seven points. Three rebounds. Mosley gives Langston a 13 point lead. Sanders, Childress, floater is good. Third field goal for Childress. He's done some of everything. Seven points, four rebounds, three assists. Lennox for three. Yes! Duquavius Lennox has eight points. Langston's up 14. Childers has the size advantage, but Lennox strips him. Lions surging again. Childress trying to guard Roy some 45 feet from the basket. That's going to be a big challenge. Roy probes, lost the handle, scooped up by Kuth, and he's fouled. And Jacques Kuth will have two free throws on the other side of the timeout with a chance to give Langston its biggest lead of the game. Lennox has enjoyed himself in Kansas City. 14-point lead for Langston. I have a little birthday message for you from someone, too. I heard you really love basketball. You're a good shooter and a good dribbler. Happy birthday, MJ, and hope you enjoy your day. Thank you. You're welcome. From our first day, Roosevelt has been a place for all. Before it was widely accepted, Dr. Edward Sparling stood for social justice. When asked to take a racial and religious census, he simply responded, we don't count that way. And 62 faculty members walked out with him. Together, they founded Roosevelt University, a place for you to belong.
Chris Wright and the Langston Lions on the precipice of their first Fab Four in school history. He took Talladega to the national title game in 2022, came up short to a juggernaut Loyola New Orleans team. And now he has what looks like one of the most talented teams in the country. And the Lions are nine minutes and 32 seconds from becoming the third one seed to punch their ticket through to the Fab Four. Kuth off the mark on the first. 82% foul shooter. Senior from Salt Lake. Forty nine thirty four. Kick out Buchanan, but an offensive foul before the three taken by Kuth. That's the third on Childress. Yeah, I think it's probably a good call. Indiana Wesleyan nearly had a chance at it in the backcourt. Brown lost the handle, last off Childress. Langston might not have quite the margin for error with their ball handling and passing if they face College of Idaho in the Fab Four that they have in this game. And there's a freedom of movement call on Childress who just got his fourth foul. So three and four separated by only 12 seconds and he's gonna have to sit down for a while. Noah Smith comes on for him and Indiana Wesleyan gets even smaller. College of Idaho and Morningside coming up later on tonight. Dean terminates, tried to kick and traveled before the turnover. It was going to be a turnover either way, probably for the best for Langston that it's a dead ball at that point. Toro Dean still has a smile on his face, though. And why wouldn't he with a 15-point lead inside nine minutes to play? Steal by Lennox and a foul on Moore. Langston into the bonus. That's the 17 foul on Indiana Wesleyan. Moore picks up his third. Indiana Wesleyan held charge for the season. DJ has three. He's set in a single bonus situation. And one and one coming up for Lennox, who has eight points. It's his first trip to the free throw line. Well, he is now an 86% free throw shooter. Only so much for Greg Tonegal to do to influence this game. It's just been a lot of Langston winning one-on-one -on -one matchups. Missed the front end, rebounded by Buchanan. Kick out towards Smith, it's out of bounds. That's the 14th Indiana Wesleyan turnover. Langston has 11. That was 7-1 to the opposite direction early on. If the turnover margin had stayed at 5-6-7 in Indiana Wesleyan's favor, I don't think it's out of the question. The Wildcats could have stayed close in this game, but they've turned the ball over now four times in the last two minutes since the turnover started to affect them around the five-minute mark, six-minute mark of the first half. Just all come unglued, traveled on Kuth. Langston did not care for that call. Cleaver. Buchanan. Size advantage on Lennox. One on one for now. He is fouled. And they'll shoot two free throws. Lines on charge number 23. Jacquavius Lennox, his second. 
Quavius Lennox with the foul. His second. The sixth, make it the fifth on Langston since halftime. They've done a good job. That was the first Langston foul in, I think, more than five minutes. Keeping Indiana Wesleyan out of the bonus. Buchanan gets the first free throw. That's his first one of the game. He still only has seven points. Averages nearly 21 a game. 84% from the line on the year. Buchanan gets both. Langston's lead is 13 with eight minutes to go. Roy. Working on Sanders. Eight to shoot. Step back triple. Rebound taken by Sanders. Those two normally combine to go over 35 a game. Buchanan just off the mark. Not even half that number tonight. 15 between the two. They've shot a combined six of 18. One out of four from deep. Buchanan has made two free throws. Cleaver has not been to the line. Now more than three minutes for Indiana Wesleyan without a field goal. Roy faces Sanders with six, turns away from the double team with five, skip pass, Mitchell, three over Buchanan, it was affected in short, Knox heaves it up, but a shot clock violation. Mitchell wanted a foul on Buchanan, two of them were having words after the closeout on that three, and Chris Wright uses perhaps a wise timeout because Langston Maybe just starting to think a little bit about the officiating, get caught up a little bit in the battle. He just wants to give them a second to take a breath, think about what they're doing. Keep in mind as well that they have a 13 point lead. Later on tonight, College of Idaho against Morningside in our final game to determine that final spot in the Fab Four. Terra one seed's already through. Fried Hardeman and Grace will play at five o'clock Monday right here on the NAIA YouTube channel. And on X, Langston is six minutes and 55 seconds from claiming the third spot and making it three for three on one seeds. The last remaining top seed and the defending national champion College of Idaho is still standing. That game will be getting underway a, a bit late, safe to say. Still got close to seven minutes of game time here, and we're at 6.50 local time in Kansas City. Imagine probably at least 20 or 25 minutes left to get through this game. Probably looking at tipping off that last game at least 7.30, or I guess more like 7.45 most likely. That'll be on the NAI YouTube page. You just have to click over to the uh, separate video, Morningside against College of Idaho. Indiana Wesleyan basketball down 13. The Wildcats really have not been able to tighten this up in the second half. They got within single digits, but that's about it. Moore draws a hedge. Buchanan has it ripped out of his hands by Mitchell. Cleaver. Rebound, Alan Tovar. Indiana Wesleyan, three of 11 from three. 36 points for the Wildcats. It's almost unfathomable. They have gone for 100 or more nine times. Dean into Moore, missed it. Rebound loose and a foul. Either Knox or Alan Tovar. It's Alan Tovar who got into the back of Bontrager. That's the sixth Langston team foul. So Indiana Wesleyan will be in the bonus on any subsequent fouls over the final 
Children. What do you imagine is the lowest point total for Indiana Wesley in this season? I'm going to tell you, but think about it for a second. Take your guess, say it out loud, write it down, whatever you want to do. It's 71 points. Moore is fouled by Mosley, and he will shoot one of the bonus. 71 points, they did it twice in a win at Spring Arbor on January the 3rd, and then a blowout loss at home against Grace on January the 31st. But only a handful of times have they been held to fewer than 80 points. Right now they're sitting on 36 inside six minutes to go. And Indiana Wesleyan is protesting that the free throw missed. This is interesting. They did what's probably smart. The, the buzzer went for a substitute, and DJ Moore, rather than complaining right away, took the shot. Presumably, if it had gone in, he wouldn't have said anything. But since it missed, he says that should be a procedure violation. And the officials are saying, Indiana Wesleyan ball? on the so How did they get that? Moore was shooting on Langston, so they said the ball, and now a foul on Langston on the inbound. This is bizarre. So I guess everybody stopped because Indiana Wesleyan was protesting. The officials said, no, the game keeps going, and it was a travel called on Mitchell who had the ball. We might have to take another look at that. It's not often we take a replay of a travel, but that was a weird sequence. Here's Sanders back at the free throw line. He only took four free throws all season. He's been at the line twice in this game. Missed the front end of a one and one last time. So if we get a chance, we might circle back to that uh, to that buzzer issue and then travel. So you're just not going to see that very often, and it leads to two points for Indiana Wesleyan. Eleven point game inside six minutes to go. Roy on Sanders to the rack. Blocked by Buchanan. Last touched by Indiana Wesleyan. So now we can go back and look at this. It's not really important, but it's just interesting. So the buzzer goes for the substitution. Moore says, what's up with that? And then the, the turnover was charged to Mitchell, but it's Jay Allen Tovar who traveled there after the replay. So I imagine they'll correct that at some point, but they did charge the turnover to Mitchell. There's a foul on Kyle Sanders, and Anthony Roy will shoot one and one. Anyway, just an unusual sequence. 336 is the scoring drop. Make it 354 since Langston scored a point. But Roy's a good bet at the line. He misses. More of the rebound. Chance for Indiana Wesleyan to get back to single digits. Buchanan drives on Dean. Beat Roy to the backboard for two. Nine-point game with five and a half to go. The scoring drought is over four minutes for Langston. That was the first field goal in almost five minutes for Indiana Wesleyan. Nonetheless, it's a 6-0 run for the Wildcats. Mosley underneath, creates space on Childress. Got his own mess, goes back up, got it in a foul. Cortez Mosley in one. And he just fouled Nathan Childress out of the game. Bontrager on for Childress. Mosley free throw completes a three-point play. He has 11 points. And the Langston advantage back up to a dozen. That could be a big moment in the game because Indiana Wesleyan was starting to gather a little bit of belief. Buchanan, hook no, rebound Mitchell. <laughs> Mosley on Buchanan. Mosley to the block. Mosley shuffled his feet in a travel. 4.41 to go in the game. Indiana Wesleyan getting it back, but Langston still up double digits. 
Your journey to become a nurse or advance your practice as a nurse begins at the University of St. Mary. For over a decade, students have chosen USM, not just because of our reputation in nursing education, but because of our approach to teaching and learning. Individualized, accredited, cutting edge, applicable. Opportunity awaits you here. Choose your path and prepare to change lives. University of St. Mary, stmary.edu slash nursing. It begins as all great things do, with the flicker, a spark of hope, a moment when you realize that given the right conditions, everything is possible. Here, we think the best way to find yourself is to look beyond yourself, because what defines greatness is a single choice, to not condemn the darkness, but to light a fire. Langston 52, Indiana Wesleyan 40 with 4.41 to go in the game. The Wildcats have the basketball, but they have not get, been able to get this close in the second half at all. They've gotten it to single digits a couple of times. Langston has always had an answer. Cortez Mosley most recently. Inside, DJ Moore for two. Ten point game, 420 to go. Mitchell turns the corner. Mitchell, no. Rebound, Von Traeger and a foul. Jay Allen Tovar is furious. Chris Wright is right there with him. It's the ninth team foul on Langston. Allen Tovar picks up his fourth with 4.04 to go. And a one and one coming for Cademan Bontrager, Richard Frenchman from Fort Wayne, Indiana, who is one of two at the line tonight. 79% free throw shooter this year. Big free throws. Indiana Wesleyan 7 of 11 at the line tonight. No. That is a big miss. Two points left on the line. Second time in the game that Indiana Wesleyan has missed the front end of a 1-1. One one. Kyle Sanders had the other. Double bonus now for both teams the rest of the way. Langston has missed six of its last seven. And a foul on D.J. Moore. That's his fourth. Two shots coming for Toru Dean, who has made both his free throws in this game. He shoots 68% for the season after he bumped his percentage up a couple of ticks yesterday. He can extend the Langston lead back to 12. Indiana Wesleyan, the better free throw shooting team, not by a lot, 79% against 76, which is still a strong number. Dean misses the first. And either team has shot free throws as well as it typically does in this game. Indiana Wesleyan 7 of 12. That's just 58%. And Langston now 9 out of 14. 64%. Dean splits them. 11 point advantage for the Lions. 3.44 to go.
Cleaver threw Moore's legs out of bounds. 15th Indiana Wesleyan turnover, and that's, again, one of the things that allowed the Wildcats to find a bit more of a footing in the second half. The turnover battle had leveled out again. That's now 15 for both teams, but the Wildcats' margin for error at this point is slim to none. Three and a half to go. Langston balled up 11. A rock fight in our third quarter final. Roy missed it. Knox. No, but a foul. Knocks his first free throw of the night, goes down. 66% foul shooter on the season. He gets both. Back out to 13. Langston can really smell that first Fab Four now. Races through for the first time since 2013. Freed Hardeman through for the first time in program history. Cleaver straight on, rattles out, rebound Roy. Cleaver all over Lennox. Dean against Moore. Dean with six, all the way to the rim. Lost it, but a foul. Whether he was shooting or passing doesn't matter. It'll be two shots. Foul on Von Traeger, his third. Toro Dean. Now four of five at the foul line. Fifteen point lead for Langston. Desperation time now for Indiana Wesleyan. Final two and a half minutes. More drives, bumps, scores, and he's fouled. Little clear out with that left forearm. The foul goes on Langston. Fouled on Roy is second. Moore misses the free throw. Indiana Wesleyan seven for 13 of the free throw line. Nowhere near their normal 79%. Not that it would make a dramatic difference, even if you gave them all six free throws. Hell, give them all eight that they've left on the line. Mosley, reverse, wouldn't go, rebound more. Wesleyan has numbers. Pushed up toward Cleaver, was it tipped? No, Buchanan just missed him with a pass. But even if uh, you gave them the six they've missed, plus the two back ends of one and ones that they haven't gotten to shoot, would still be a five point Langston lead with a buck 47. A minute 47 to go, 16 turnovers for Indiana Wesleyan on the verge of getting held under 50 after they had never scored fewer than 71 in a game this season. 34 games. Mosley! Hello! And goodbye, Indiana Wesleyan. Moore fouled by Knox. One more time. Up high, down hard. There's your dagger. And an exclamation point on.
DJ Moore to the line. DJ Moore at the foul line for two. Cortez Mosley just had the moment to seal it for the Lions. Probably sealed already, but that's the one that will stick out. Checking in for the Wildcats, number 20, Noah Slim. Moore splits them, or uh, rather misses both, I should say. 15-point game. Mosley to the rim through Bontrager to foul. 65 seconds to go, and Mosley will shoot two. Okay, so Turns, Sharif Knox checks out. The Langston Lions getting ready for their first Fab Four in school history. They will see the winner of our final game tonight, College of Idaho against Morningside. One minute. Buchanan over Mitchell, got it. The Wildcats have gone over 100 this year more often than they've been held under 80. They've never been held under 71. They're on 46. Certainly they did not shoot well from the three-point line or the free-throw line. Lennox off. But Langston deserves a lot of credit for this defensive performance. It'll be fascinating to see what it looks like against the finesse offenses of either Morningside or especially College of Idaho. Moore off a ball fake, fouled by Dean with nine and a half. Two free throws for DJ Moore, who is just one for six at the line. Normally an 81% free throw shooter. Not tonight. This is going to be sort of in that middle tier as far as the scores are concerned. Not close, but not what you would call a blowout. It has felt like a blowout just because of how hard it's been for Indiana Wesleyan to score. If this is the final margin, 13 points. Indiana Wesleyan scoring 13 points took a long time, 48 minutes. That would take more than, or 48 points in 40 minutes. It would take more than 10 minutes to get there. Langston going to the Fab Four for the first time in school history. The Lions become the third one seed to punch their ticket to Monday night, 61-48 over Indiana Wesleyan. One more game to come. Top seeded defending champion College of Idaho against the three seed Morningside. 61-48, your final. The winner of this game advances to the late game on Monday night of the Fab Four. We have three top seeds through. Freed Hardeman will play Grace at five o'clock Monday. Langston will play at seven against the winner of our final game this evening, College of Idaho against Morningside. That'll be on the NAIA YouTube page. What got out of this one? Head over to that video, and we will join you there in 20 minutes. Anthony Roy, Cortez Mosley, Toru Dean, and the Langston Lions headed back to the Fab Four. Chris Wright's second trip in three years, but the first in school history for Langston. 61-48, your final. One more to go from Casey.